In this video, we're going to have a look at the concept of nucleon spin. Nucleon spin sounds pretty high tech, but it's kind of quite simple once we once we get our heads around it. So, let's say we know that a nucleon is either a proton or a neutron. All protons and neutrons are considered nucleons. And so, if we if we have a nucleon here, we have one nucleon, then this nucleon will always have this intrinsic uh, property that we call spin. Every nucleon in every nucleus has some, this, this concept of spin, and this spin is kind of, it's a magnetic, it's a magnetic phenomenon, but we, it's, it's quite, kind of, it's very hard to visualize and sort of conceptualize, and so we sort of describe it and, and, and visualize it as uh, the idea of this nucleon spinning, as if we were to draw an axis through it, and the nucleon was spinning around like that. But that's not really important. The way we visualize it and all that isn't important. The fact is that every nucleon has this, this property that we happen to refer to as spin, and this spin can either be up or down at any given time in a nucleon. So let's say in our nucleon here, we've got our, our spin up, and let's say down here we've got a nucleon with its spin down. So this spin, this spin quality can either just change between up and down uh, for, 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 for different nucleons. And the, this, uh, this up spinning nucleon and this down spinning nucleon both have diff both have the same energy right now. There's no difference in energy uh, when uh, between neutrons spinning up and neutrons spinning down. However, if we apply, but we, so this spin sent this spin idea is a magnetic phenomenon. So it's a magnetic, sort of a magnetic phenomenon. And so if we if we've got two nucleons like this, one with an up spin and one with a down spin, and we apply an external magnetic field like this, then although without the magnetic field, these were both considered to have, have the same energy. Now that we've applied an external magnetic field, these both have different energies. So when an external magnetic field is applied to any nucleons, nucleons will align themselves. So we could draw, if the external magnetic field was like that, then these would tilt slightly. So they would be either pointing in the same direction as the external magnetic field, like that, or in the opposite direction to the magnetic field. So they will align themselves with or against this external magnetic field. And here we've got this one is aligned with the magnetic field. And this one is aligned against. And so now, now that we've got this external magnetic field and uh, these up and down spins are now, are now either aligned with or aligned against the external magnetic field, the energy of these two nucleons is in fact different. And so if, it's, if a nucleon is aligned with the magnetic field, that is... The lower, the lower energy state. If a nucleon is aligned against the magnetic field, this is the higher energy state. And so what can happen is if we have a nucleon in the lower energy state, so its spin is aligned with the external magnetic field, then this, this nucleon here can absorb some electromagnetic radiation and that way, that, that electromagnetic radiation might, will carry energy equal to, so we'll say that this is one photon of EMR here. And we'll say that the difference in energies between the high energy nucleon and the low energy nucleon, we'll call that delta E. And so the, if the energy of the photon is equal to the difference in energies between this nucleon and this nucleon, then that means that this nucleon here can absorb this, the energy of this photon and therefore transition to a higher energy state. So if we have a low energy nucleon that absorbs the right frequency of light, the right frequ the, the frequency of light uh, of which the photon will carry exactly an, an energy exactly equal to delta E, then uh, this nucleon will become a high energy nucleon and its spin will realign itself against the magnetic field.
So, if we sort of draw this in a bit more of a flow chart, like this, then what happens is that we've got we've got a nucleon here spinning with the magnetic field, and if we add a frequency of light, the right frequency, then what we get is a nucleon spinning against the magnetic field. Now, after this is this is in a high energy state, it's a little bit less stable, and so what happens is it pretty soon goes back to how it was originally. By so it returns back to its its spin that's aligned with the magnetic field, and it releases that same frequency of electromagnetic radiation. So it's kind of just absorbing this light, holding onto it for a split second, and then while holding onto it for a split second while it's in a higher energy state aligned against the external magnetic field, and then it releases the photon again. Now it just so happens that the photons that tend to carry in the right amount of energy for this process are radio wave photons. So we're almost always dealing with radio waves when we're talking about nucleon spin and uh, changes in energy. So that's the process. That's nucleon spin, and that's how we can sort of that's how we can analyze the energy of nucleon spin. Now, the other day I ran a few tests. I, I sort of looked at the frequencies of. I sort of was was analyzing this process in real life. I was running a bit of an experiment, and I basically had. I was going through lots of uh, lots of lots of different nuclei, and I was bombarding them all with. Uh, with radio waves to see if you know their spin would realign and what would happen if, if certain radio waves would be absorbed. And what happened was I, I found that what tended to happen was that if I was dealing with nuclei with an even number of nucleons, so these are all nucleons here, and so we've got a whole nuclei. If I was dealing with nuclei that contain an even number of nucleons, then no radio waves would be absorbed. However, if I was dealing with a nucleus that contained an even number of radio waves, then it, I mean, that it contained, sorry, an odd number of radio waves, then waves would be absorbed by the nucleus. So, why does this happen? That doesn't really, that's a bit of an oddity, isn't it? Well, basically it's a ball about the net spin of a nucleus. So, if all the nucleons in here have spin, then the spin of the nucleus as a whole will equal the sum of the spins of the individual nucleons. And when we have when we have uh, a nucleus containing an even number of nucleons, then what will almost always happen is that, in this case, there are four nucleons, so two of them will have an upward spin, and two of them will have a downward spin, so they will cancel each other out. However, if there are an odd number of nucleons in the nucleus, then these can't possibly cancel out. We could have in this case, two in each direction, and then the, third, the fifth one will decide which direction the net overall spin of the nucleus will be. So in this case, because there's an extra nucleon with an upspin, then the nucleus as a whole has an upspin. Here, there is no there is no net spin on the nucleus, and so that's that means that we can only really analyze this this nucleon spin excitation process when we've got nuclei that contain odd numbers of uh, of nucleons. So that's that's a very important thing to consider later on when we deal when we when we look at spectroscopy. So we can only analyze nuclei containing an odd number of nucleons due to the the cancellation of nucleon spins when there are when there is an even number of nucleons. So that that's how nucleon spin works and that's how we can excite it and this is a really important idea when we're dealing with